Hey everybody, Jared Bendis here. I'm the Creative New Media Officer for the Freedman Center for Digital Scholarship at the Covenant Library here at Case Western Reserve University. And today I'm going to show you how I'm going to post-process this scan from an Alice in Wonderland book from 1893. Now I've got the scan here and I've scanned it as best as I could on one of our book edge scanners, which means the pages are completely flat. Obviously, it's a little crooked, it's upside down, and it's old. So, how am I going to clean it up? Well, I've opened it up in Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it image rotation 180 degrees. There you go. So now I can see it. So now that I can see it, I can see that the page is crooked. Now, it's kind of weird because there's not a lot of good reference here for how I'm going to straighten this image. Matter of fact, if I were to actually crop this image right now, you wouldn't necessarily notice that the image is crooked, but I would know it was crooked because I could see it's crooked on the page. So instead, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the crop tool and I'm going to click the straighten button. I love the straighten button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line right here along the edge of the page. And what that's going to do, it's going to straighten that side of the page. I could have either straightened here or here, hoping that page itself is straight. And now I'm going to get a much better version of the image. I'm not going to overcrop, by the way. I'm going to give myself a nice room to crop. I was told that I just needed the image. I don't actually need the full page on this one. Sometimes I need the exact page, and I'll make sure that all the pages are the same. But this time I'm just looking at the image itself. So nice composition. We know it's straight. Double click, and it's cropped. Magnifying glass fit screen. That's my good habit. I always do to look at what I'm looking at. Now I could save it right here and be done with it. I scanned the image as purely as I could on the flatbed scanner. And that scanner, by the way, has been what I refer to as decalibrated. It's not self calibrating. The idea is that whatever the sensor data is, is the sensor data. But let's be practical. This is a color image from 1893. That page has probably changed tone. The ink has faded. Things are different. So how am I going to restore the color? Well, one of the ways I'm going to do that that is I'm going to assume for a moment, just assume for a moment, that when the paper was new, it was white. Now, is it going to be a pure white? No. But if we use that as our base assumption, then we can sit here and say, what if everything is sort of aged together? And if we de-age it, then we can de-age it together and see what we have. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the 100% and see our pixels here. And what we're going to notice, which is really nice about this, is that this image here is not, it does not appear to be screen printed. And we, it, it looks like it's been printed with multiple colors, but it doesn't have that, you know, common pattern that we see that is indicative of screen printing. It looks like it's been printed in layers, but that's different than your standard dot screen printing. So I don't actually have to worry about sort of blurring this back together, which is pretty interesting. I wonder uh, how this was printed. If this was screen printed, it's not obvious. So let me zoom back out to fit screen. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my levels. Now, normally when I bring up my levels, I could come over here and I could see the distribution from black to white. This is our value. And if I do that, you're going to notice that there's at one point there's this big dip. And what that dip here is normally is the, the page tone itself. Let me show you what I mean. If I were to bring over the white value right to here, you'll notice that the page is almost getting white. Notice it's whiter at the top than on the bottom. And of course, if I bring it over here, now we've got complete whiteness of the page, though we've blown out some of the image. The idea being is that all of these highlight regions here are mostly the page. And we, but I'm not going to do that. That's not what I want at all. I press the Alt key and hit Reset. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at the individual red, green, and blue channels. If I were to look at the red channel, separate from the green channel and separate from the blue channel, you'll notice very distinct shifts. Let's start off with the red channel. Now again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want my data to start over here. So basically I framed my data, made the image a little bit darker, that's going to make the reds a little bit redder. But I'm going to assume that this big white spike here, this big light spike here, the highlight, is the page itself. So I'm going to go all the way past it and right about there and say that should be go away. That's all we don't want that. And you'll see the page got kind of red when I did that. Let me come over here to the green. Set my data to begin over here. Basically, I'm getting to those big shadows are going to be nice and shadowy. And again, I'm going to bring the data all the way over here. And that gets rid of that big spike of, again, what we assume is the plate tone. And you'll notice it was a different spot than where the red was in the green was. And now with the blue, it's going to say, oh my god, the blue's all the way over here. Very little to move the blue in the shadow region, but if I move this all the way over here, what you're going to notice is, and that's it, what you're going to notice is, is that what you're not seeing here is a blowout. You're seeing that all of the paper is gone, and not only is it gone, but it's white. And I've shifted all of the color, and I'm going to go show you again before and after. 
before and after. And it's going to look a lot cooler because the image was so warm. That's going to be from the plate tone from the page. So now that I've done that and I click on OK, now you're going to see that the colors are a lot more vivid. Now, are they the right colors? You know, you never can tell. This is me going beyond just a straight scan. I'm trying to make things look fun and good. But what you'll notice now is, is that all the color is a nice from black to white, no major spike. And that's, that's actually correct in here. And again, if we look at the, these, we're going to see that it works pretty, pretty well, which is I'm very happy with. So what else can I do to the image? Well, number one, I can just stop. I can stop and say, listen, I've got a nice clean page. Well, almost clean page. Now I can use a white, a white uh, eraser, by the way, or white um, paintbrush to get rid of the dots that don't belong there. A uh, couple of specks here or there to kind of take away from it. So what else could I do to make this a little bit more vivid? And I think the vivid is the word that I'm thinking of. So I'm going to bring up uh, my hue saturation tool, and I'm going to look at what the saturation looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring the saturation up all the way up to the extreme to see what colors were there. The saturation is going to be a good indicator of what we want to do here. Of course, I can bring the saturation all the way down, which is grayscale. Again, starting at zero, I'm going to bring the saturation up just a little bit, just a little bit. And at some point, it's going to get a little bit too vivid. You see, it's a little too vivid. Bring it down, something like that, something where it's kind of bright. And again, I went from this to that. And that makes me feel pretty good about it. So there you go. I'm feeling happy. Let's come over here and bring up my history. And let's take a look from the, where I left up. That's the crop. I went from this to that. That makes me feel pretty good. It's probably a little bit cooler than you're expecting because that white is a pure white. That may seem off to you. And that could be because, again, you're used to seeing sort of a page tone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one last thing. and just going to take it down a little bit. And that is I'm going to apply a warming filter to the entire image. So I've got everything up a little bit. I may not keep the warming filter. I just want to see what it looks like because the art of Photoshop is to be willing to experiment. I'm going to go over to Photo Filter. And I'm going to look at the warming filter. And the warming filter right now is set to 25% pr preserve luminosity. So you can see there's the warming filter. There's actually two different warming filters. There's three different warming filters. I'm going to go back to the first warming filter. And again, you can change the density of the warming filter. See how that's changing? Notice it's not changing the white of the page, right? And that's kind of a kind of thing versus if I uncheck preserve luminosity, which will actually get rid of the white and add a little bit of that plate tone back in there. So again, something like that might do it. Um, I'm probably not going to keep this. I just like to kind of see what that would look like. I'm probably going to leave it as the pure white because, again, the pure white page is, for the most part, what I'd want to have if I was going to be doing any sort of printing because I don't want to have uh, everything be you know, a yellow on a white. I would want as white of a background as possible. Anyway, so that's how I do it. File save. File save. And there you go. Now, I've already backed up the original, so I have the original scan, which I can always go back to, so I don't have to handle the book if I want to. And there you go. My name's Jared, and I hope you enjoyed this little fun tutorial. Thanks. Bye.